Hello AWS friends, in this tutorial let's have a look on the new AWS Service Code Whisperer. Um, so you can take a look in my GitHub um, repo AWS Code Whisperer, which is basically um, a simple CDK Python project set up by init command and um, in this project we're going to test some of the um, features from Code Whisperer. You can see by the comments um, uh, how actually a Code Whisperer can work. And first, to set up Code Whisperer, uh, you can see here's the service uh, you can already found on the AWS console, but you have to switch to North Virginia. It's only available there yet. And you have to go actually first to the identity center in your IAM, and in identity center add this application Code Whisperer. You can also do so with your uh, builder ID, um, but that's the first requirement. Set up the service um, in your account, and then you can use Code Whisperer in your uh, source code tool. Once you have activated Code Whisperer in your account, you can integrate it in your source code tool. For example, I'm using Visual Studio Code here, and here in the AWS um, plugin, you find developer tools. Um, it's connected with my builder ID, and you can here I got uh, something for CDK and Code Catalyst already. And here is a preview for Code Whisperer. It's still in phase preview, and also uh, also um, only available in North Virginia. But we can s al already use it. Um, first, you have to um, start your auto suggestions, and while it's running, you can then um, start to code and get tips from Code Whisperer. Let's try Code Whisperer for CDK classes. So here in this folder I got already existing files and where you also can find examples by comments. And I'm gonna add here a new file, my stack Python. And let's uh, um, add some imports. And by now, as you can see, Code Whisperer is giving me a first suggestion, and with the tab, um, I can actually accept this. Here on the next line is already the next suggestion, and whatever you need here. I'm not going to create an EC2, but um, I'm going to need IAM, and so I'm finally adding a little bit more um, imports here manually. and I'm done with this import stuff. Now, when I do a return, um, Code Whisperer already understood this is going to be a CDK, a CDK stack, and as you can see here, I can just accept it with tab, and I can also by now accept C constructor with the init method. Now let's see if we can create some resources. So I'll create a comment um, to give Code Whisperer a little hint what I'm planning to do. And by now, um, here you can see the suggestion. Code Whisperer is already helping me for the constructor of the queue. Sometimes, like here, it seems to be stuck, so I do an extra return and again. And then we are done, and Visual Studio is going to format this for us. Um, so we are actually, we need here duration, which is missing, so I'm going to add this one here, and remove this one here. Of course you have to adapt um, the generated code. Sometimes it might also not always have all parameters you need, but you have at least um, a good hint for uh, initial um, constructor of the resource. Maybe let's try a topic here. Yeah, already some succession on here, and that's it basically. So we got a queue and a topic. What about connecting topic and queue? So here we go. So now let's try to create some 
IAM stuff maybe, create a role. And that's it, here we got our role. What about the policy for our role? Let's see. So I'm accepting again with top. And now you can see here one more succession, attach policy to row, why not? And here you go. So we have added um, CDK class, added some resources. Please feel free to add your own resources, whatever it's going to be, a EC2 or ECS service. So by now um, I have only, uh, I have also a folder lambda here in my sample project where you can also find some examples and by the uh, comments you can see maybe how to create here some functions or some stuff which is going to be useful. Now I'm going to add a new empty Python file and I'm going to do some imports. What about JSON? It's always going to be useful for a Lambda. And boat to 3 looks also good. And now Code Whisperer already understood, hey, this looks like a Lambda function, JSON and Boto3, and is going to create the Lambda handler method for me. Here's also, also a new um, succession. Let's accept this. So as you can see, here's some sample code to read from Lex runtime and return this message. Not going to use this for now, but also a nice a little a sample here. I'm trying to add some more functions here. So I'm trying to describe um, in this comment here what I'm going to need. A function that reads a text file from a S3 bucket. And returns the content. Let's see if this is going to work. Yeah, this looks quite good. So we got here a function to read a file from S3 and return its contents. Now let's try maybe a second function. Here we got already a succession, a function that writes a text file into a three bucket. Yes, I will accept this and see how this is going to look like. Write file. So we need the bucket. We need again the boto client. And that's it. It was actually just the put object. And here we can see one more succession, a function that creates a new S3 bucket. Maybe let's see how this looks like. Create bucket. Again, the client for a bucket. And then the method create bucket. Maybe a function that converts a JSON file to a CSV file. Um, first, um, keys in the JSON file are the headers of the CSV file, right? That looks good. And here's a JSON to see CSV. And here's already the method. So I hope you get an idea how Code Whisperer works and how you can use it maybe for your own 
project, um, please set it up in your account, uh, integrate it in your in your source code tool, and have fun. I have tested it with Python, basically with CDK code, with lambdas. Um, I don't know how good is the support for other languages yet, but the tool is going to learn, and so it's welcome the more people are using it. Thanks for listening, and see you in the next video.